The first time I met Leslie, or at least saw her in person, we both remember it very vividly. She was outside trying to get photos of a dog. And I see just the back of Leslie just like making these noises. She's like on in weird positions on the floor, and which is funny because now that's my job. Like, I didn't know she was the founder. I just thought she was some crazy dog lady, which she is, but she's also the founder of Wags and Walks. <laughs> So one day I saw a Facebook post about a dog named Hooch and he was this gigantic brown, you know, jowls everywhere, uh, green eyes, and just looked so soulful in this Facebook post where they were saying, he's gonna be euthanized today. And I just hopped in my car and I just drove to that shelter and I thought there's no way I'm gonna leave you behind. Hooch was my first official rescue. doing this all out of my house. <laughs> my backyard and my garage was, was wags and walks for quite some time. I think in the first days of WAGS, years of WAGS, it was all about my passion and my desire to help, and I'm not the kind of person that you know does things halfway or a little bit. So I remember we had a volunteer named Megan Carter, and Megan said, you know, what do you think about getting our own space? And I thought, what a great idea. Walking into the Sepulveda house, we call it, it just felt like we were a real thing now. This was that, that big leap of faith that we can do this. It was this perfect little house. It wasn't an office or anything, it was a house that the garage in the back was converted to seven kennels there, seven crates there. It was so surprising to see the amazing work they were doing coming out of this like tiny like 600 square foot house. It was a little family. It was just amazing to me how it's come so far along and what she's been able to accomplish believing in myself, believing in the passion that I feel, and then surrounding myself with other people, willing to give of themselves, which has been a beautiful thing to see from my perspective. That's been how Wags and Walks has grown. So there definitely was a community around me, but it was small and you know it needed to grow in order for us to grow. It was one of the highlights of my life. The ribbon cutting was very exciting. It was surreal. It was like, oh my God, we're really growing something here and building something. We'd come so far from Sepulveda. The center is such an awesome example of what can happen when we work together and people donate so generously. It was very exciting, mostly because it meant that we could rescue more dogs. And that was the most exciting thing I could feel, surrounded by all the people that made this happen. The center is so important because there are so many dogs that end up in the shelter that don't have homes. Just being part of a dog's journey to a forever home is, like, it's indescribable. So that's why I do what I do every day and why everyone here does what they do. I would say, honestly, one of the most memorable days that comes to my mind is right before we shut down for COVID. We all shared this moment of fear. This was an emergency. We had to get all of our dogs out of the center because we were completely shutting down. We weren't gonna have any staff here. Everyone was like, okay, all hands on deck. What do we need? One of the most challenging parts of my career at WAGS thus far. The bond that we all built that day is unbreakable. I mean, we were always a family. But that day in particular, it was so obvious how much we needed one another to get through the biggest challenge there was. But what organization or business hasn't grown and faced challenges and then grown because of it? And I feel like that's what Wags and Walks always does. And that's exactly what Catherine's done in Nashville. She started saving dogs like at warp speed. We made an objective to save 50 dogs the first year and we saved 584. <laughs> so it took off 
really fast. But I think what's been really great is just seeing like how WAGS Nashville has become a token of the community. I was just there visiting and celebrating their two year anniversary and she has a community around her very similar to ours where people are willing to step up and do what it takes to get these dogs safe. She is very inspiring. For me, it's her persistence. She's gonna get what she wants, you know, and she's gonna work however hard she has to and do whatever she has to. She's a force. I mean, she's always just this like presence and this big ball of energy every time that she's in here. She's just such a presence, a problem solver. She sets her sight on something and, and gets it done. She knows exactly what we need to grow as an organization and to obviously save more dogs. Like, that's her ultimate goal. So whatever it takes to get there, she will, she will get. <laughs> just like her hard work ethic at it has been really awesome to be around. She just doesn't take no for an answer. There's always a way that we are gonna find something to make it work. Thinking about WAGs in 10 years is like, like I'm so busy on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't even think like a month ahead, but WAGs Mox Nashville is hoping to open up our very own adoption center very soon. That's our, our definite next move. There's always sights on, you know, having a veterinary care facility. There's a lot of dogs that they take in that have a lot of issues. To actually have a vet on the premises, I think that would be a great addition. We're really invested in rescuing the dogs that need us the most. So being able to have our own vet's office will then be able to help us save even more dogs that need it the most. We really support our adopters, whether that be behavior, medical, we see them through and even after. So a WAGS dog is always going to be a WAGS dog. We do every single thing we can here at WAGS and Walks. All of it matters and makes such a big difference. There are a lot of thoughts and hopes to expand to different cities. Obviously, we already have Nashville. We're looking into New York because that's where I'm from, and I'd like to help out there. The more places we can be and families we can create <laughs> with rescue dogs, the better. Leslie is very driven, so I don't doubt that there will be many more big accomplishments to happen in the future. Everyone that pitches in just makes us feel so supported, and it's inspiring to do the work that we do, and we know we can save 20,000 dogs in the next 10 years.